the definition of sustainable development that everybody sort of acknowledges is that it's this idea of development for the present that doesn't sacrifice opportunities for the future. This is at Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, sustainable development. What's the best path forward? As the number of emerging economies increases, the urgency for sustainable development policies is rising as well. And even though leaders agree on the need for global guidelines, they haven't been able to agree on the terms, notes non-resident fellow Nathan Hultman as he takes a closer look. Sustainable development is an incomplete roadmap. It's got strength and it's a concept that still retains a substantial amount of, um, of credibility in the international community. There's a there's a healthy concept within sustainable development, which is that we want to make sure that we develop economically without sacrificing the ability of future generations to develop themselves. In other words, not sacrificing our air, our water, our oceans, our biodiversity. So that concept is, is completely healthy, and it's, it's a great concept to, to think about as part of our roadmap. But it doesn't have some of the other elements that we need, and I think it's a mistake to focus exclusively on thinking about sustainable development as the only way to think about protecting the environment and encouraging economic growth at the same time. Well, Nathan, you just mentioned that there are some other elements to be considered when you're talking about sustainable development. What are those? What sustainable development really doesn't provide is it doesn't provide a way to integrate innovation and new technologies into the fabric of different countries environmental and economic policies. And that's where I think we need to think more carefully about how we might as an international community, as well as as a community of domestic or national governments, to embed the process of innovation more deeply, not only in the places that we think of as being innovative, you know, the sort of Silicon Valleys of the world or Mumbai, these kinds of places, Bangalore, but instead to think about innovation as a diverse concept. It's something that happens across the development context spectrum. So even in uh, you know, least developed countries, in emerging economies, and to think creatively about how we encourage the kinds of technological innovations that we know we're going to need to address the sustainability issues that are coming up uh, in the next 50 years. Nathan, a lot of emerging economies take issue with the constraints um, put upon them for environmental development. They feel that they should be able to develop unfettered, as the United States, uh, Britain, um, Germany, France have done for so many years. How does that factor into this issue of sustainable development? Many of the countries, again, diverse countries, emerging economies, least developed countries, certainly will acknowledge that there are environmental problems, not only globally, but even in their own countries. And that's a first step. Uh, to then acknowledge, yes, sustainable development is important, and then to say, look, it is in our interests to think about more regulation or more at least involvement if, of regulatory processes in things that are polluting or at least bringing more clean energy, more clean processes to the economy that's in our country. Some way of, of addressing that is something that each of the countries will often subscribe to. The real question is, what do they subscribe to as a kind of international agreement or a kind of consensus document? And that's something where it's been much harder recently. There are certain countries, in fact, some of the emerging economies were particularly uh, conscious of guarding their own domestic ability to act and to define what the problems were for themselves rather than have an international document define it for them. There is a cadre of world leaders that gets together every 20 years to really survey the landscape on uh, sustainable development. They just met in Rio and they issued a paper going forward, a paper that left you a bit underwhelmed. Why is that? The document that came out of the Rio Plus 20 meeting was fine. It reaffirmed sustainable development. It reaffirmed a number of other principles that had already been agreed on in previous meetings. But it didn't go very far toward an establishing anything new. There were other aspects of the meeting, though, that might be viewed in a more positive light. You know, so number one, there certainly was the opportunity for a number of other organizations who were present at the meeting to release their own initiatives. And, and this is what some people have called the cloud of commitments. And in other words, nothing that came officially from the official negotiations, but organizations such as the multilateral development banks or individual countries or UNDP 
have all come and essentially offered voluntary commitments or voluntary initiatives. We call them voluntary, but they're, they're initiatives that those organizations have agreed to take on. One example I like to talk about is that the multilateral development banks, the, inter, uh, the IDB, World Bank, uh, ADB, um, announced a $175 billion initiative to support sustainable transportation in emerging economies in less developed countries. That kind of initiative is concrete. It has specific outcomes, it has specific projects, it will support things like bus rapid transit, which can help not only with current emissions of harmful pollutants and greenhouse gases, but also can change development patterns because people's, where people build buildings will change depending on where the rapid transit lines are. So it can actually lead to a healthier long-term urban environment as well. So that kind of initiative is bankable. Sustainable development is a very important issue but it is one that is moving forward very slowly. Should we be optimistic that world leaders will ultimately come to some sort of terms that everyone can agree to? We are in a global economic crisis. A lot of countries have been reluctant to put a lot of funds into specifically uh, developing something that looks like its only environment. But if we imagine this is embedded in the economy and jobs and green, you know, green economic, uh, a green economic future, there is more incentive for countries to incorporate that in and imagine they might get real and concrete benefits from it. So uh, maybe in the short term, we're, we're, we've got a bit of a headwind, but uh, hopefully countries will be establishing the groundwork now so that as the economy recovers, we'll actually see this diversity of innovative technologies blossoming, uh, not only in, in places we'd expect, but also in the unexpected places of the world. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.